A short while ago, news broke that a consortium of more than 50 ex-WWE superstars were suing Vince's House of Winces for cumulative injuries accrued under the watch of World Wrestling Entertainment. Jimmy Snooker, Road Warrior Animal, Paul Orndorff, even Sabu, because yes, he really was the very picture of health before his 12-month WWE run. Point is, though, even though WWE is being publicly taken to task for dangerous working conditions, it has made the effort to curb some of the injuries accrued by its talent. Certain maneuvers that previously weren't are now banned, and some moves are so bad crazy that WWE have always said, ha <laughs> ha, nope. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 wrestling moves WWE banned for being too dangerous. Number 10, the chair shot to the head. Remember the good old days when our favorite wrestlers would grab heavy metal objects and crack them as hard as possible into the head of your least favorite wrestler? Well, turns out that's actually quite bad for the brain, which is, and this is another spoiler, inside the head. Thanks, science. Who the f*** knew? Yes, turns out the thunderous chair shots of old were absolutely awful for the human body, with cumulative concussions causing horrendous permanent damage and numerous neurological conditions. They are now 100% forbidden in WWE, and to be honest, yeah, no, that, that's fair enough. Number 9, the pile driver, because turns out dudes like breaking necks, while well, the tombstone pile driver still gets busted out by Kane or The Undertaker on occasion, because why don't you tell them to stop? The original pile driver itself, famed finisher of Jerry Lawler and signature move to many, has been pretty much outright banned in Vince McMahon's Punchbox lunchbox. The last time it appeared was during a CM Punk John Cena match in 2013, because those guys were at the point where they could say, and what, you'll f***ing fire me? Ha 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 ha! But yes, ever since Stone Cold Steve Austin had some of his best earning years taken away from him by a botched sit-out tombstone, the pile driver has been quietly phased out. Number eight, the curb stomp. Okay, well, first things first, a curb stomp isn't really that dangerous, at least not when performed by Seth Rollins. More people have been injured just walking across the ring than have been by the architect's former finisher. Kevin Nash. The reasons it was banned were it directly targeted the head, which is a problem in a sports industry more and more concerned about conditions stemming from concussions, and B, because it was seen as two quotation marks dangerous quotation marks for the kids at home. After all, if the kids tried curb stomping each other in the playground, then that is a bit of a PR boo-boo for WWE. Now, of course, most moves, if done incorrectly in the playground, could leave you a bold shade of dead, but there's something about kids stamping on each other's heads that put the win right up WWE's spot. Number 7, the Canadian Destroyer. Well now this is just some beautiful nonsense. The Canadian Destroyer, aka a pile driver with a front flip attached, because why the stupid f*** not? It's a move that's found a rapid cult following because it looks utterly bananas, P.T. Williams made a huge deal about how it can never be countered, and also it's dangerous to the point that necks break just by looking at it. Not because of the impact, necessarily, the flip actually removes a fair amount of momentum on the head coming down, which is ironic when you think about it, because why else would you do the flip? No, it's the amount of cooperation it requires between the two opponents that makes it tricky. Both men have to have their athleticism on point to make it safe, and the slightest screw-up could result in the man being pile-driven landing on his neck at a truly awful angle. Number six, the Kaniku Buster. And speaking of moves that tell necks to absolutely go screw themselves, the Kaniku Buster, everybody. So Samoa Joe seems like a nice man, if that very nice man turned into a potato who wants to kill you. He has a finishing move called the Muscle Buster, where he gathers you above his head before falling backwards and slamming your back to the mat. It's all very good. The Kaniku Buster is that, but instead of falling backwards, the man inflicting the move drops to his ass like he's doing a stunner, so the victim's entire body weight slams right onto the shoulder, with the neck taking every last bit of that impact. It's a stupid, stupid, stupid move, which WWE would never even think of subjecting one of their guys to. Number five, the Victory Star Drop. The next in the you next world tour. The Victory Star Drop is a wretched hive of scum and villainy in the form of a variant on a reverse Frankensteiner from the top rope. But Adam, master and commander of my fluttering loins, I hear you bleed. It's not banned. Bailey and Sasha did a Victory Star Drop at TakeOver Brooklyn. Ha <laughs> oh, No, they did not. They did a straight up reverse Frankensteiner, which means Bailey's legs were around Sasha's head. This meant Sasha had more release to turn in midair and land as much on her front as possible. If they had done a Victory Star Drop, Bailey's legs would have gone under Sasha's arms, giving her a much smaller rotation and slamming her right down on her neck and shoulders and then Sasha would have died and then everything would have been a bit awkward. Number four, the dragon screw neck whip. Why do wrestlers hate necks? So you know Randy Orton's vintage DDT, legs suspended from the middle rope, bang straight down to the mat? Well, the mad wrestlers in Mad Japan look at that DDT and think, that is adorable. The dragon screw neck whip, and it really, really shouldn't exist, is when the victim's legs are suspended from the top rope and then they're brought down with their opponent twisting their head around as they go. Not only are they coming smack down onto their dome because of the elevation, but their necks are also being twisted around just for extra danger. I'm starting to think that all wrestling should be banned. 
Number three, the diving headbutt. Still in the general head area, the diving headbutt, as innovated by Harley Race and showcased by the likes of Dynamite Kid, Chris Benoit, and Daniel Bryan, is a simple but very dangerous move. After all, it involves hurling yourself into the air and throwing your skull as hard as possible into a person, or worse, the mat. Also, look at the above list. Dynamite Kid, wheelchair bound after extensive neurological damage. Daniel Bryan, forced to retire after way too many concussions. Chris Benoit had the brain of an 80-year-old Alzheimer's patient when he died, and that's an actual doctor's opinion. Even Harley Race himself, the innovator of the move, has gone on record stating he wished he'd never invented it because of its history of head and spinal damage. Don't be surprised if the diving headbutt quietly disappears from WWE. Number two, the top rope big boot. Because of course it f***ing is. Sid snapped his leg directly in two doing it. Of course it's banned, you idiot. Why are you stupid all the time? And number one, the burning hammer. Might as well finish with a move that will break your neck. It only seems right. Invented by Kenta Kobashi, the burning hammer begins with a wrestler grabbing his opponent on their shoulders like they're slapping on the torture rack. Then they do an inverted Death Valley driver, bringing their opponent right down on top of their head with only their neck and shoulders to cushion the fall. Even in Japan, where they do horrendous things to themselves, the burning hammer is brought out very, very rarely. So dangerous is the move. It's so dangerous that Kabashi has only used it seven times, just seven throughout his entire career, and no one's ever kicked out of it. It is an apocalyptic move. The proper version is, of course, banned in WWE, but funnily enough, Tyler Rex did a version of the move. It was much weaker. In fact, it was just an inverted attitude adjustment, but they called it a burning hammer, which is an insult to all the Japanese wrestlers who nearly lost their lives taking this absolute lunatic of a move. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatGolter.com, and I'll see you soon. Remember when What Culture did a magazine called Wrestling? We're doing another one called Wrestling. Issue 2 will feature a career retrospective on Brock Lesnar and an interview with Paul Heyman. It'll feature another How WWE Should Have Book written by this sexual modern stallion. There'll be all the usual top quality articles and artwork, as well as a top 50 list of the greatest SummerSlam moments of all time. Like last time, you can pre-order and buy your own copy in the link below at shop.whatculture.com. Order now to enjoy Issue 2 of Wrestling.